An emotional tribute has been paid to larger-than-life Kangaroo Island bushfire victims Dick and Clayton Lang. Seven News was invited by a cousin and nephew of the pair as he erected a memorial to the men who died fighting to save a place they loved. On the outskirts of Pandana, a young soldier approaches the horrific scene where his family members' lives were tragically taken. Yeah, yeah. you can't put words to it. Holding the two handmade metal crosses, he fights back tears before erecting the roadside memorial. As a reminder of his lost loved ones. The emotions I'm going through is a, mi a mixture of pride and sadness. In the heart of the island, legendary Outback pilot Dick Lang became trapped in his car while his son Clayton, an acclaimed Adelaide surgeon, attempted to flee. He was found on the highway 200 metres away. The pair succumbed to the fury of this ferocious fire. I could tell immediately that there was no hope for them. They, they really were caught in such a strong fire. To Lieutenant Kynan Lang, they were affectionately his uncle Dick and cousin Clary. He received the news Saturday morning from his distraught father, but by that afternoon, he also got a call from the army. He was deployed to the island days later. I'm here because both uh, Dick and Clary were trying to help the community, and I believe that they had a baton and they've dropped that baton. I've now picked the baton up and I keep running with it, so... I'm here to help the community. He's had a chance to reflect on his larger-than-life relatives who died while trying to help others. My uncle and my cousin put the community before themselves and they gave their lives doing that. A funeral will be held in Adelaide and a service on Kangaroo Island on Friday. Casey Trelaw, 7 News. And Casey joins us from Kangaroo Island where a community meeting's underway. Casey, what's the latest? Rosanna, the CFS has told residents there's still reason to be nervous despite milder conditions. Almost 200 people packed into the Kingscote, call, uh, Kingscote Hall here where some spoke of their devastating losses. The bushfires began on Kangaroo Island 26 days ago and authorities say the threat remains. They've warned there's no guarantee they'll be spared from more fires this summer. We're just waiting and waiting because you just don't know if the wind shifts the wrong way, is it going to come towards us? Is it going to get out of control again? I was out there for a while today, it seems to be getting better. I suspect it will be a long time before we have the confidence to declare it safe. Despite the fire threats still lingering, the worst of it appears to be over. The mayor suggesting crews have been able to break the back of this monster. Residents and local support groups are now actively working to try and restore normal function to the communities here, but that won't be quick and it will take months, if not years. Rosanna? While the bushfire crisis cripples the nation, local farmers want to remind us about the extreme drought on Adelaide's very own doorstep. If it doesn't break soon, some say they could be forced to walk away altogether. Less than two hours from Adelaide, farmers like Kyle Zerner are in the grips of the most devastating drought the area has seen. Carl, when was the last time you planted a crop here? Uh, that was uh, 2014, last time uh, we've had a flood out here. Farmers around Udunda say they're being forgotten as they brace for a fourth consecutive year with minimal rain. It's frustrating um, in South Australia that we don't get recognised as being in drought and we're possibly at times in worse drought. Bone dry paddocks and dusty roads are all that's left of this once lucrative landscape. There's very little money coming in because people haven't made any money for the last three years. The Daring brothers have been forced to push the next generation away. My daughter's gone out working because um, yeah, we just haven't been able to support her. It's ridiculous because here we are producing food to feed the world and yet on the other hand we're borrowing money to try and um, keep ourselves going. With finances tight and hay stocks running on reserve, many are going to extreme lengths to keep their livestock alive. We've tried uh, numerous sources. We've tried potatoes, oranges, great mark. Livestock are very important to us and uh, certainly when you see a youth, for example, with stillborn lambs, that's probably one of the hardest things to actually, yeah, as a farmer, to actually take. For farmers in this region, their livelihoods depend on the drought breaking soon, but there's no way of knowing when 
that might be. Can play an impact of how many farmers are going to pack up and walk away. Rather than waiting for the drought to break, they're searching for solutions. Once a month, farmers are meeting with officials from PERSA, the Environment Department, local council and the Red Cross. We're finding out what's available for us to support and help us. But there's only so long handouts can be relied upon. They're hoping Mother Nature will be kinder in 2020. Casey Trelaw, 7 News. Last night we brought you the heartbreaking story of a veteran with PTSD whose support dog went missing from his property. Now for some good news, the pair's been reunited and police are following a strong lead. They say a dog's man's best friend and for Brenton and Brian it's a bond like no other. Plain to see the moment they were reunited. Elated, yeah. Lots of tears. Not just a pet. The three-year-old bull mastiff Brian is Brenton's support when he suffers the crippling effects of post-traumatic stress. And he's my, essentially he's my medical aid. He helps me. But last week, Brian was snatched from his Eulabry property. That day, a dog groomer happened to drive by and spotted a man with him. I just said he'd seen the dog running around on the road and he was just trying to get him into his van so he could take him down to the vet to get him checked to see who he belonged to. That never happened. Six days passed and Brenton feared his prize-winning pooch wouldn't be found. Then last night... I got a phone call from the, the guy that had picked him up. Um, and he said he was going to return him. When Brenton quizzed why he hadn't taken him to a vet... He said his mate was in love with him. Police are investigating. Brenton is thankful to everyone who put the word out about Brian. He believes the publicity helped lead to his safe return. I thought, oh, maybe somebody will know something. I didn't expect to get him back like within an hour of the news. That was incredible. Casey Trelaw, 7 News. Good stuff.